Welcome. In front of me is a Poco M3 Pro and today I'll share with you a couple of tweaks and tricks, fairly basic ones, that you can perform on your device to customize the working of it to a little bit to fit your needs. So anyway, get started. We're gonna begin with the dark uh, mode or dark theme depending on how it's called in here, which can be found under settings, display, and it's right here, so dark mode. Now, one thing that uh, Android started using with uh, using and actually changed in the dark theme slash mode uh, is the addition to schedule. Now, by default, before, uh, assuming your device had it, you could just switch it on and off, uh, which would be completely manual and you would have to do it. If you wanted back light mode, you need to go back into the settings and uh, toggle light mode on, right? Uh, just as a, you do with the dark mode, but Nowadays, Android also has a schedule, which can tag along. And as you can see, we have a sun sunset to sunrise uh, and a custom. So custom will allow you to just set up the hours specifically, which hours it will turn on and off. And basically what this allows you to do is have dark mode during, for instance, night and light mode during the day without you needing to do any extra work. You just set this up and well, you're, you're basically done. And personally, I find this really useful because as an example, during the nighttime, uh, when it's darker, um, lighting up your phone, uh, I prefer not to get blasted with uh, the sun equivalent uh, brightness right in my face when I'm uh, basically stumbling in the darkness. Uh, so this really helps when you have a dark mode and it's not as obnoxious, basically. And same thing goes for the daytime. When it's a light outside, uh, it would be a little bit harder to see the dark theme, dark mode. Uh, so light mode will be better during the daytime. It will be a little bit easier to actually see the display. So again, amazing feature right here. And moving on to the next option, option which is in the display section, it is the refresh rate. Now for some reason it's set to 60. I have no idea if this is the default, to be honest. I believe it is actually because I think I just did a factory reset of the device. So this device supports 90 hertz refresh rate, and one thing that I have to give props to Xiaomi is the, the actual like animation right here that they show up just for people that have no idea how refresh rate affects the actual display. So here you have the animation of a ball jumping around, which basically shows you how it will affect the display. Uh, so. Imagine that this ball is just you scrolling up and down. So in here you have it kind of like choppy, while here it's way smoother compared to the bottom option. Now, truth be told, on the camera, you, in both cases, you're seeing 60 frames, even though it says 90. And even when I'm looking at this, I am looking at 60 as well. So when I toggle it on, I think it might look, yeah, now actually it looks better. So. It, it looks kind of weird. There is little difference when you toggle it on and off uh, in the 90 hertz uh, animation, uh, but there is a little bit. Now, the actual difference that you're seeing right here is quite exaggerated. Obviously, you don't see your content when you're scrolling up to basically skip as much, uh, but 60 frames uh, hertz is a, a little bit less pleasant to look at than, for instance, 90, which gives you that nicer smoothing animation and the, where the actual text doesn't like split basically it just makes it look like it's constantly fluid motion so highly recommend it now i will warn you one downside of a high refresh rate is the fact that your battery life will decrease a little bit so you will be using a little bit more battery than you did before if you want to prioritize that then 60 frames will probably be something that you want to stick with but for everybody else that prefers that that a nice buttery smoothness on your display, uh, stick with 90. It's, in my opinion, way better. Now, moving on to the next option, it's going to be the gesture navigation. Now, again, uh, uh, for some reason, Xiaomi doesn't actually enable this by default. And it, it, honestly, it is baffling to me. Uh, majority of the devices nowadays uh, do enable it by default, or at least give you the option to choose if you want the uh, gesture or not here it just kind of like nah here you go here is your uh here are your buttons um good luck have fun uh if you want to look for gestures uh they're somewhere in the in the settings they're also really hidden 
And one thing that also Xiaomi does really poorly with uh, gestures is if you try to search for gestures, you won't actually find them, I think. Let's just see, maybe they changed it. Gestures. Okay, so they actually made it searchable. So at least that's good. Uh, at one point, uh, you could not find it because it was literally named full screen display. But actually it's searching now for gesture in here, which wasn't the case before. So you couldn't actually search for it. Now it, it is searchable, so at least that's good. But still the naming of it, full screen display is a little bit like misleading. Like what the hell is this? Full screen display. I mean, my display is full screen. Like that F is this supposed to be. So yeah, uh, naming for this one is quite terrible, but the usability of it is good. And when you try to toggle it on, as you can see, it gives you the learn gestures. I'm going to select not now because I know them. So I'm going to quickly go over them. If you haven't seen this before and use, you swipe up from the bottom of the screen like so. And when you swipe up and hold like I just did and let go, it goes into recent. Quick swipe up, goes home. And when you're in some kind of app and you swipe from either side, as you can see, it brings up this arrow. This is the back gesture. So uh, personally, I adore the uh, swipe from sides to go back. It really makes it nice to use the device. You don't have to like reposition your thumb to try to hit the home button at the bottom. You just kind of like swipe from the side, which is really easy when you're holding the phone with one hand and using your thumb for that. So yeah, I recommend using gestures. And moving on to the next option, which I actually won't be able to really show off is the floating windows. Uh, you can find it under settings and special features, which is somewhere at the bottom. Floating windows, there we go. As you can see, it allows you to open up an application in this kind of like pop-up view, uh, but it works only when you actually get a notification. So there is an animation for it. You get a notification, you just drag it down and it expands it into this kind of, where is it, come on into this view like this, where you can interact with it, uh, type on it and, and do whatever you would do normally. You can move it to the side and make it smaller. And then when you want to interact with it again, you click on it and it expands again. And yeah, uh, so that's basically as good as I can show you how this works because I believe there is no way to actually enable it. Nothing here, let's try maybe this will have it. Yeah, no. So I, I cannot actually enable it. It's just strictly for notifications. A little bit of a, of a shame, uh, but still better than nothing. And last thing that I wanted to show you is split screen. Uh, now this is, a lot of people probably know of the existence of this, but probably a lot of people don't use it, uh, which if you were an advocate user of YouTube, and for instance, trying to do anything else, uh, this is actually a really good thing to be utilizing. So as an example, if I open up YouTube first, I can then go home or not home, but into recent, hold the YouTube and it gives me this two bar kind of icon right here. When you tap on it, it opens it up in split screen. And from here, you can open up any kind of other application that you want to split screen with. So as an example, browser, and you can also resize it. This will basically fit the entire video that you will be watching and you can do other stuff. Additionally, when you're watching something, obviously plays and plays the sound and stuff like that. When you go home, it will minimize it, but will not pause the content. So you can continue to listen to it even when you're fiddling around on your home screen. So I highly recommend utilizing that. Now that being said, this would conclude all that week's interest that I wanted to share. And if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.